Today on Finding the Frequency, I'm going to show you how to find the tempo of a song in Reaper. Hey, welcome guys. This is Dr. McFarland, and I want to show you a quick way to figure out how do I set the tempo to a track if I don't know what the tempo of the track is. Okay, well there's a really easy way to do that. And the program I'm using is Reaper. Uh, but I'm sure you can apply this method to any doll of your choice. So if you see here, here's my WAV file. And I just uh, recorded a track from YouTube here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I know where the first beat of the song is. So in order to find the first beat of the song, you're going to have to find the first transient. And a transient is really just the initial hit of the waveform. So if I blow up really big right here, you see all these little waves and stuff going on. Somewhere in here is our transient. So what I can do, and this needs to be highlighted. So this is an unhighlighted track, so you need to click on it. And then for me, I'm going to hit tab which I think is uh, a common keystroke for Pro Tools as well. And you'll see that there's my very first initial attack of the wave right there, which is called the transient. So from that point, I am going to press S, which is going to split the wave. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to slide it all the way to the beat zero here. So here is the very first transient on measure number one, beat zero. And what I'm going to do now, this is very, this is the most important step. Because as you can see, if I play this track, okay, now let me turn on the click and redo that. All right, you notice right away that the tempo of the song is not the same with the tempo in the project. So what we're going to do right here, you see this little area right here where it says BPM. That's where we're going to change the tempo of our song. But first, we have to do something very important. We have to go to Project Settings. We have to change the time base for items, envelopes, and markers. Okay, normally it's default as beats, but I've already done this once. So I'm just going to show you the process I go through changes. So time base for items, envelopes, and markers. You got to go to time and then press OK. And now what can happen if I scroll my mouse over the BPM right here and I use my mouse wheel to go back and forth, you see I can change the timeline behind the waveform. So now what we're going to do is we're going to press our space bar to play the song. We're just going to simply count, you know, one, two, three, four. Where is a measure can uh, lie within this waveform here? So let's find that out. Let me turn off the metronome so we can hear without uh, things being too jumbled. All right, so somewhere around here is our downbeat, all right? So let's move our background timeline to where this lines up. Pretty close, all right? And now I can see just from experience that I think this is my next measure because that lines up perfectly with the next downbeat Right? See where this is? This is my next measure. I go to measure five. Right? That lines up. Measure six. So I'm pretty confident that this song is 118 beats per minute. All right? So let's just check and see what happens here. All right, very cool. So I am 
confident now that if I try to record anything else with this track, then I can just, I can actually just mute this and know that everything I record at 118 beats per minute is going to line up with this track perfectly. This is an easy way to save yourself a lot of time, especially when it comes to editing, because you need to have things lined up to a grid. Not for the robotic sense. We don't want to make robots within the computer here. Uh, make all your vocals and drums just, you know, so tight with a grid that it doesn't sound human anymore. But... If something is off, you can get it back on track fairly close. Let's say, for instance, you know, let's say this track over here, you know, this was like a vocal recording or something. All right. So let's say we slide this back. And that's how it was actually recorded. Well, I can go back and listen to it and see with my eyes that yes, Here's my downbeat of beat four, and this waveform does not line up with that beat. So I would just go in, slide it over. You know, I can make it a little off the grid or right on the grid or wherever I want to put it. And that just helps me visually to know that, yes, if I put this on the grid where I think it should be, that means it's going to line up with everything else I've already recorded.